Hi, I'm Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter, from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. So this week we are back with month two for our annual quilt along. So this month we are working on our 2023 quilt along where we're doing a quilt as you go. So we've already made all the blocks. We made those back in January. And each month we're simply going to be quilting one of the blocks and then we'll go ahead and join them together into a full size quilt. So if you are new here, I'll link, um, check out the blog, go back to the main quilt along post so that you can find the starting information and you can come and join us at any time. On our blog, we'll also have all the information we're gonna talk about today. We'll have the quilting plan posted there. We'll have you know the pictures and things so that you can print those out and see those and follow along. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop for your next modern quilting project. So when you're picking out which block to quilt, remember we're gonna quilt them in order, starting from the top left corner. So this one's gonna be the top middle on the top row, the middle block on that top row. And there is a diagram on the blog post as well. So that's gonna kind of show you which block we're doing. And the reason that we're doing them in a specific order is simply so that when we go to join them, we're gonna be cutting different amounts off of the sides um, so that we can you know, leave the borders on the outside. This quilt is gonna have borders on the outside. So we wanna make sure that we leave that. And so we're gonna be trimming each block is gonna be trimmed a little bit differently if you don't care what order they're in, grab any block you want and we'll go ahead and start quilting. So this is our quilting plan for today. As you can see, we're gonna be working on these ribbon candies. We call them the ribbon candies because they look like those old fashioned candy that was rolled up on itself. And then we're gonna be doing some of our little um, arches. And I'm gonna show you how to quilt these from the start to the finish without stopping. So I'll show you the path to move through that when we get there. And then we're gonna be focusing on straight lines. Last month, I didn't worry about marking my straight lines, but we're gonna be doing some more here and we want them to be a little more even. So I'm gonna show you a real easy trick to mark those if you don't have a marking pen. Um, I've got a little trick up my sleeve that will help mark those out. But first, we're gonna start right there in the center and we're gonna do our ribbon candies in the center. So I'm gonna start here in the corner and we're gonna do the same thing, start in the middle and work our way out like we did last month. So we're gonna start in the corner and we're gonna use the material because we have these seams, these are already triangles. We don't need to worry about marking that out. And we're just gonna go out and in and out and in, gradually getting bigger and to then smaller back to the other side. So you can see here on this one, if you can, this is gonna be the ideal way to kind of make it fit is if you can make it so that you're making one big loop down here in this point, it's gonna fill the space and it's going to fit, um, fit the best. As you can see, some of them as I was doodling this out, they don't really quite fit that so well and I ended up with a squampy arch here um, to make that fit and to fill that bottom corner. So that's kind of be, wants to be your goal as we're quilting this aim so that you have a nice even loop here in that bottom part of the triangle. So now that those are done, we're gonna go ahead and move out to the sides. And I'm gonna go ahead and start, I wanna start on one of the points, it doesn't really matter which one. So wherever you finished, we're gonna start right there on that point. And we're gonna mark these out. So the way I've got these lined out is I've got the one along the seam, or along the, from the point to the point, and then this one here, I went ahead and I aimed for the middle of that block and then just went straight out from that middle. Then we're gonna put one in the middle there and then put one more little triangle there. So what I'm gonna do to mark that, because I wanna make sure that it's gonna fit where I want it to, so I'm gonna use a kitchen butter knife and then my ruler. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my ruler and I'm gonna line it up point to point and you don't need to really give yourself any um, like space here because there's almost no width to this. And then you're just gonna use the back of the butter knife and you're going to just push down. And now you can see we have a line there to follow and it's just gonna come right out next time you wash it, iron it, fold it around a little bit. And we're gonna mark this one. So we'll mark all four. And mark the top one. This kind of basically works. You can see those, the people have the bone tools as well. It's basically the same thing. Then I'm gonna mark from the middle at that point first. So I'm just gonna kind of 
you can you know kind of mark where that is so we can see and I'm just going for a straight line out of there and then I can easily come in and just eyeball a line in the middle of those and then we're going to come this way same thing just straight out come in and eyeball a line right in the middle of those and then we're going to do one more and I'm basically just eyeballing um, in between these two this center point and the line and I'm going to come out here turn it from here and then that gives me all of my lines to go ahead and follow as we're quilting so I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out the rest of these and then it'll be really easy to sew those straight lines now that we've got these marked when I quilt them we're gonna go in a little bit different than what you might think we're gonna do so I'm gonna start here at the point go out work down the side just the stitch in the ditch come down this one then I'm actually gonna go all the way over and skip this middle one and go over to this one come out then go over down up over down up then we go down here and I'm going to go down to this one come in go up and then go over down up and we're just going to kind of then come out here go over and then up so it's going to kind of like swap each time come over down along down here over grab these two inside squares over down come back out over in and out in and out and this is going to allow us to do the least amount of having to go over the same spot time and time again now we're ready to go ahead and quilt these outer triangles and since how we've stopped here we're just going to follow down along the um, seam and then we're here in this corner to do this one so we're going to go in and out in and out and fill this in just like we did last time then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go over across the top and that's going to get me to this triangle and that's going to put me so that when i end i'm right here at this corner already which means i can do this one across the top Go along this one and then just back out to this one across the top down out across the top down now we're here and done with all of those triangles really easy moved around the block and the final thing we have to do is our corners so because we didn't do a lot of pebbles this block should go probably go a little bit quicker for you so what we're going to do to make sure that we don't have to um, stop or move around at all we're going to come out to the edge here right here and we're going to go in and then we're going to go up and then down now we're going to go around the outside and then we're going to go up down around the outside around the top and then we're going to hop up and grab this whole triangle one two three now the only thing we have left is this side right here and that one is done then what I'm actually going to do is come along the side along the edge down across the back of this and out then we just come in with the rest of our squares and I'm going to go ahead and mark these the same way as we did with the with the uh, knife so you can see this is a seam here so you're just going to mark halfway between and then halfway between so you use those seams to get those halfway between lines in there and you, and um, follow along and just extend so like this seam will, seam will just be extended then that one's going to be there halfway in between them and it makes it really easy to mark those without having to measure everything then when we get to here we're going to follow along the outside edge again and then right back down to our next spot where we can go bump in then up the side down the side along the back up down along the side along the top jump out oh, and grab this guy one two three now we have one left and then we can go down here oh, sorry out the side back down and then grab our squares along the edge and then finish out with the last two blocks I'm hoping this will be you know, easy to see without my finger in the way a little bit easier as we quilt it. So I'll make sure to walk you through that again as we quilt it out. So before we start quilting, if you've forgotten how to set the machine up, or if you've forgotten how to sandwich the three things, um, go back and check month one video. I'm actually gonna have a link below and that's gonna link you to the exact spot in that month one video, just to go over setting up the, the quilt block and getting ready to quilt. And then before we start, I am going to reach down and grab my bobbin thread so they're both on the top and what this does is it makes sure that you're not going to get birds nest or tangles on the back and it has all your threads right there easy to tie together and bury later so we're going to start with the ribbon candies and what I'm going to encourage you to do is to not turn your block at all is to practice doing it from all directions so I'm going to start doing it this direction and then I'm just going to go ahead and switch and go back this direction where it's not straight lines it's a little bit easier um, 
to get that to still fit without having to turn and it's great practice to not turn your quilt block so that when you are ready to go on to bigger um, quilts you can kind of get that uh, feeling where you can't turn it as easily so we're going to turn on the quilt so I've got my needle I just changed it so it's in the down position and we're going to just take a couple stitches and then we're going ready to go ahead and do that and just like before with the pebbles if you're finding your curves are not smooth try speeding up just a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and start down here and I'm going to try to do this in as few um, finger moves as possible because curves it's hard to keep them smooth after you've stopped but if you do need to stop I like to stop near an edge it kind of hides bumps if you do have one When we get to the corner, we're just going to go right to the next block. Now we're ready to start on the straight lines. We're to the corner, so we're just gonna go, oops, sorry, we're just gonna go out, then follow down along and come back down this one. Then we're gonna skip this one, come down here, and then go in and grab these two inside ones, and then come back down here and finish off the other side. And with this, like I did before, I am going to turn it so that whenever I'm doing these straight lines, I'm doing them straight up and down and not trying to do them on an angle. Now here, because it's sideways, I'm just gonna go ahead and just go straight sideways. Now back up. And we'll grab the two inside triangles. Now if you are having trouble seeing the lines that I did with the, the uh, knife, you can definitely use fabric marking pens and things as well to get those in there. This is just if you don't want to have to worry about removing them later or you don't have any fabric marking pens, it's a great way to get those done without needing those. All right, now we are to the next little section. So we're just going to move in. And this one's gonna be gone in a little bit different order than the last one because we're gonna end down here. So we're gonna come in, come out and grab this, then go do our inside triangles, and then go grab our other two sides.
Now one little tip as I go up over this last bump, there's a lot of fabric here and it can cause bumps that are hard to quilt over. So if you're finding that, you actually want to go a little faster and that's going to help you get up over that bump without having it get caught. And to get back out of here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just trace back over this line I made at the first, at the beginning. So when we finish the straight lines, we were here. So what I'm gonna do before I start is I'm gonna go ahead and just go down along the, um, the ditch, the seam line, to get me down starting in this corner. So now that I'm here, now you can just go ahead and like I said, you can leave it in one position. You don't really need to be turning it around for these. Practice doing these wearing candies in all sorts of different directions. So from here, we're just gonna follow down along the edge of the block. And again, we're just kind of keep that out of the, um, inside the, the binding where the seam's gonna go over. So keep it in that, like about an eighth of an inch in. Don't go in farther than that, and you don't have to worry about seeing it. And now we can come down to our next triangle, and we're gonna stitch this one, and then straight out this one without stopping. And now that I'm done there, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Go down around the outside and then finish doing all of the outer triangles. So now we're gonna move down and we're gonna do those little arches on the triangles without stopping. So I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you through that path again. And really, um, even if it's on a different quilt, if you play around with it, you can usually kind of find the same path and have it so that you don't have to worry about stopping whenever you do circles like this. Um, arches like this fill in circles it actually works on squares too so i definitely encourage you to find that path when you're doing these kind of grid shapes so like i said we're going to start um, i'm just going to go ahead and start down here because that's where i got to first so we're going to go in then back down then along the you know, turn it so you can see a little better we're going to go in here then back down this triangle then we're going to go along the back then up this side and down that side along this far side and up here and when we get to this point at this now i'm going to go ahead and grab this triangle then from here, I'm gonna go up here and then come back down here to where I started. Then I can just work my way out along the side of that seam. And we're just going gently out and back in.
now that we're here, we're going to go along that seam, stitch in the ditch. And we're going to go all the way out to the side. Then we're just going to move along the edge of the block. And now I'm lined up and ready to do these seams. So I'm going to go down here first along the farthest one. Now from here, I'm going to stitch in the ditch along that triangle. And then go out the side. And then the rest of them are going to be easy. Come in, just go in and out, in and out, in and out, and then we're done with this corner. Now, because this seam is kind of, this line is kind of on that seam, I don't want it to be in the ditch. I want you to see it. So I'm actually gonna just stay right on top of that so that it actually works as a quilting line too and it doesn't just get lost in the ditch. And now I'm done with that corner. I'm gonna just follow my way down along the side and fill in the other one. Don't forget, if you need to see that pathway again, go ahead and rewind and watch this block, this corner over it, and so you can really make sure you understand that pathway before you get quilting that. And I would also try, you know, use your fingers to trace over it a few times so that you're comfortable before you quilt that out. And now we are done with block two, focusing on learning those ribbon candies and practicing those ribbon candies. And I just want to encourage you as we go throughout this year, don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, nobody else is looking at your stitches as closely as you are. You're the only one that's inspecting each and every one. So be patient and give yourself opportunities to practice and to, to learn and to grow. So to, um, have fun. You know, if we're not having fun, then why are we doing these hobbies that they're just stressing us out? So just try to breathe and have fun and enjoy the process. Also, if you really liked the kind of grid quilting that we did in these outer triangles where you kind of go back and forth, we do have a few other motifs on the website. So if you go to our tutorials and go down the free motion quilting, you'll see some other grid type designs. They're a lot of fun to quilt out and give a lot of fun texture to quilt. So if you enjoyed that and want to explore more of that, we do have some more there as well. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We are happy to answer any questions that you have as we go along. And then you'll have all month to finish this block up and we'll come back and do another one next month. And then after we finish that one, we're ready to go ahead and join the top row together. So with that, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Somebody also mentioned they would like to see the backs. So I'm gonna post pictures so you can see it better. And I will be posting pictures of the backs on our Instagram and Facebook feeds as well. So you can find those there and see other things that we're working on. We're working on our first pattern of the year and it's gonna be super cute. So don't forget to you know, keep an eye on that and we'll see you next time.